Get ready to dive into the fascinating world of magnet production. Did you know the global permanent magnet market is projected to soar to 78.9 billion by 2032? Stay tuned to uncover a surprising aspect of magnetization that will leave you intrigued. Let's dive in. The first step in making magnets from alloys is to select the appropriate raw material. In magnet production, the raw materials often hold more significance than the manufacturing methods. The first step involves carefully selecting the appropriate raw materials. Alnico magnets are permanent magnets, so the raw materials for their production are aluminum, nickel, and cobalt, alongside additional elements such as copper, iron, and titanium. These precise proportions of these elements are crucial, as they directly influence the magnetic properties of the resulting alloy. Thus, careful consideration and control of the alloy composition are necessary to achieve the desired magnetic strength and stability. So, the next step is the casting process. When crafting materials, raw metals are poured into molds to shape them just right. Now here's the interesting part. These molds are usually made from sand. And why sand, you ask? Well, it's because sand can handle the intense heat from the molten metal without losing its shape or getting all messed up. Plus, it's affordable and easy to find pretty much everywhere. So, using sand as the mold materials makes sense from both a practical and cost-effective standpoint. The process is initiated by creating a sand mold of the magnet's shape. The mold is then loaded into a machine, which fills it with sand. Once filled, the mold is extracted from the machine and its surface is smoothed to remove any excess sand. Subsequently, the sand mold undergoes a second round in the machine, where it is chemically hardened using pumps and gases, solidifying in just seconds. The resulting sand slab reveals the impression of the magnet shape, now serving as a mold. The casting process is crucial in determining the magnet's overall structure and composition laying the groundwork for subsequent steps such as heat treatment and machining. Now it's time to mold the magnet shapes. Copper, cobalt, sulfur, nickel, pure iron, aluminum, and titanium are gathered for this purpose. These metals are introduced into an induction furnace, where temperatures can soar to approximately 1600 to 1700 Celsius, or 2900 degrees to 3100 degrees Fahrenheit, heating the metal into a molten mixture. Induction furnaces are a fascinating technology used to heat metal directly through electromagnetic induction. Now here's how it works. You've got this crucible where you load raw materials and it's surrounded by an induction coil. When the furnace is turned on, the coil generates a magnetic field, which then induces electrical currents within the metal. This process causes the metal to heat up quickly and efficiently, melting it down for various industrial purposes. It's a sophisticated method that offers precise control over temperature and energy usage making it a top choice for many industries requiring controlled melting processes. During the heating, ensuring the homogenization of the molten alloy is crucial. The process guarantees that even distribution of different elements, thereby contributing to the uniformity of magnetic properties across the final product. Afterward, the final molten mixture is poured into the sand molds, resulting in a sudden burst of flames. This occurs due to the high flammability of the gases used earlier to harden the sand. Now the next step is the cooling and solidification process. After the casting and molding process, the magnets undergo a controlled cooling and solidification phase. To achieve this, the molds are transferred to another section of the foundry, and they're intentionally dropped onto the ground to help them cool and harden properly. Cooling begins by forcefully opening the molds with a sledgehammer, allowing air to enter and gradually lowering the temperature. This step is crucial for establishing the alloy's microstructure which directly impacts its magnetic properties. Once cooled, the contents are transferred into a bin, and the magnet shapes are retrieved using, appropriately, a magnet. At this stage, the molded pieces look like regular metal as they haven't yet developed magnetic power. Now the next step is the magnetization process. These magnets at this stage lack magnetic power, so now it's time to magnetize them. Take, for example, the ring-shaped magnets, which are threaded onto a copper pipe. This pipe-covered ring assembly is then carefully centered inside a larger tube and tightly packed with silica sand to keep the rings in place. Once the tube is adequately packed, its ends are sealed with concrete, allowing the copper tube inside to extend slightly. 
Then, it's off to another electrical furnace. Here, the tube containing the magnet shapes is heated until it glows red. Heat treatment is a crucial step in magnet manufacturing from alloys, aimed at optimizing their magnetic properties by enhancing corsivity and remnants. The ultimate aim is to produce magnets with consistent and reliable magnetic behavior. Next, an electromagnetic coil, often resembling a solenoid, is used to magnetize the ring-shaped metals. This coil, typically made of conductive material, generates a magnetic field when electricity flows through it. The strength of this magnetic field is directly proportional to the current flowing through the coil. The batch of ring magnets to be magnetized is exposed to this strong magnetic field, which influences the alignment of magnetic domains within the material. Once the process is completed, the concrete seal is broken. This process leaves the ring shapes mildly magnetized but, most importantly, properly oriented in terms of their magnetic field. Moving on to the next step, which is the machining and grinding process. The magnets then undergo machining and grinding processes to achieve precision and shape. Precision grinding and shaping processes are crucial for meeting the specifications required for the magnet's intended application. This stage ensures alignment within industry standards and client requirements. The magnetization process is where the magnet gains its magnetic properties. Although subjected to a magnetic force previously, this force didn't magnetize the material. It merely aligned the magnetic field to prepare it for magnetization. In this process, the object is placed between the poles of a strong electromagnet and aligned in the preferred direction for magnetization. The external magnet fields align the magnetic domains within the alloy, thereby giving permanent magnetization to the material. Now, the last step is quality control. Once completed, the magnets undergo comprehensive quality control checks, including analysis of magnet properties, dimensional inspections, and visual assessments. These checks ensure that the magnets meet industry standards by carefully analyzing magnetic properties, checking dimensions, and visually assessing quality. Any issues or defects can be identified and addressed properly. This commitment to quality ensures that customers receive reliable and effective magnets for their specific needs, contributing to the success of of various industries and applications. Following the quality control checks, the magnets are packaged and prepared for distribution to customers. Each magnet is carefully labeled and stored in appropriate packaging to prevent damage during transportation. Researchers are constantly seeking to develop even more powerful magnets than those currently available. These stronger magnets could have various applications, such as creating compact, high-torque electric motors for battery-powered industrial robots and laptop computer disk drives. Additionally, enhanced electromagnets can be used to propel high-speed trains using pulsed magnetic fields, leading to the development of maglev trains that hover and move without physical contact with the rails reducing mechanical friction and noise. Moreover, pulsed magnetic fields could potentially be utilized to launch satellites into space without relying on expensive and heavy booster rockets. The future holds countless possibilities for the utilization of powerful magnets. Learning about how magnets have been made has been a fun adventure into the world of science. From melting metals to shaping them into magnets, every step is important. We hope you enjoyed discovering how magnets were made. Stay tuned for our next video where we'll explore more interesting things. In the next video, you'll see